Hello, my name is Michael Lannan. I'm the founder and executive director of 2020 Direct Invest. Uh, as part of our commitment to DIY investors, today I want to talk about one of the fastest growing areas in, of investment in Australia, self-managed super funds. On recent data, there are over 430,000 self-managed super funds, representing some 800,000 su super annuants or investors. And that now represents about a third of the, the $1.2 trillion superannuation industry. I guess there's a reason for this growth. There's probably there's some, I guess, the main reasons for people setting up self-managed super funds are, I guess, greater control over their investments, access to a wider range of investments, you know, beyond the traditional asset classes of shares and managed funds. People can buy collectibles like art. They can uh, access direct property. And I guess finally is, you know, people look at potential for lower fees. Depending on your balance, you can potentially have much lower fees using a self-managed super fund. And I guess there's a greater transparency of your transactions and fee structures. So ultimately, I guess, when it comes to self-managed super funds, the growth has been phenomenal. But I don't, I don't believe that self-managed super funds are for everyone. I've seen a range of planners and suburban accountants oversell self-managed super funds. Accountants get another client they can bill to. Planners have a, a more of a captive audience. But let's look at, I guess, self-managed super funds in terms of the fees and, the fees and costs associated. If you're going to have a self-managed super fund, you need to look at uh, what exactly are the benefits to you. Now, very often, for many people, but certainly lower balances lower than 200 to 250,000, and I guess adding an extra layer of fees by having a self-managed super fund, which typically runs two to three thousand dollars a year to administer, can honor, can be not that cost-effective. Certainly, if you're just using managed funds and shares, as a lot of our clients who have self-managed super funds, they've only added an extra layer of fees, which is ultimately reducing their retirement, retirement benefit. If you set up a self-managed super fund, this involves, I guess, additional responsibilities. Uh, a lot of people don't give a thought to you know, how those responsibilities can affect them. Firstly, self-managed super funds, the majority are administered by the Australian Tax Office. So what happens, you have obligations as a trustee, have a written investment plan, uh, basically understand your responsibilities as a trustee, keep up with the changing laws around superannuation, making sure your fund is compliant. Because if your fund is non-compliant, the penalty is it's taxed at the top marginal tax rate. Next thing is the administrative burden. So as a trustee, you have responsibilities for, I guess, to the fund members, you have fund BAS statements, annual returns, collection of, of information about your investments, and, and this for many people is outsourced to an accountant or an administrator. I guess, but two of the, two of the things that are very common among self-managed super funds, two traps I see very often is that self-managed super funds often have a high level of cash. Uh, industry statistics show but 30% of funds in self-managed super funds are in cash. Now while that may have helped investors during the GFC, in the long run having such a high cash balance really affects your long-term returns. So as an investor, all what I'm seeing is a lot of people are setting up self-managed super funds, but they're not doing the management part. They're actually putting the cash in and not getting around to actually making the investment decisions. And I guess another, I guess, particular trap is that people who run self-managed super funds using a suburban accountant, because you have a time lag of nine months from year end to file your annual return, a lot of investors have self-managed super funds, but they have no idea of where their fund is on a day-to-day -day basis. They're often up to nine to 12 months behind before they figure out how much tax is owing, how much benefits are there for the investors. And this affects people when they're calculating how much their, their contribution strategies. It affects, I guess, the overall sort of how is my fund performing. So I, what I suggest is that in terms of self-managed super fund, do not enter into a self-managed super fund lightly. There are responsibilities. They are administered by the tax office. And the penalty from getting it, for getting it wrong can be large. So if you already have a self-managed super fund, or if you're considering setting one up, you need to ask yourself the question, what am I trying to achieve by doing this? Now, is it to save fees? Is it to give a broader range of investments, greater control? Well, because. A lot of people tell us they're setting up a self-managed super fund because they want to access direct shares. They become a bit disillusioned with only managed funds. Well, if that sounds like you, one of, one of the poss other possibilities is to use a superannuation wrap account. Basically, you get consolidated reporting, up-to-date access to your information available 24-7. You're able to invest in cash, term deposits, shares, and managed funds in a single platform. The fees can often be comparable. And, 
Uh, the other, I guess the other key thing for people is that in this time, I guess time poor society, the obligations of being a trustee of your fund and doing the administration of your fund are removed. So very often, uh, more people are using just managed funds and direct shares than using sort of collectibles as part of their superannuation. And if you're one of those people that just want to access direct shares or have greater control of investments, you might want to consider a superannuation wrap account, which will give you access to hundreds of managed funds the top 300 shares in Australia, and allow you to have some greater control. And the fees very often can be lower or more comparable, but all the headaches of being a trustee and doing the administration. So if you're considering sort of setting up a self-managed super fund or looking at the alternative of using a superannuation wrap account, at 2020, as part of our ongoing commitment to customers, we've sourced the personal choice e-wrap superannuation and pension product. This is basically a white label version of Asgard's superannuation pension and ERAP. But the key difference is that it's available to you on a direct basis. That means you don't need to use an advisor and incur advisor service fees. So you can access you know, over 350 managed funds, the top 300 shares in Australia, and you have the ability to take control of your transactions and, and the friendly customer service staff here at 2020 will enter your transactions on a non-advice basis. So you have control over your superannuation, you have access to a, a wider range of investments, and ultimately you don't have the burden of being the trustee of a self-managed super fund. So I encourage you to look at the uh, personal choice ERAP super as an alternative to self-managed super funds. So if you'd like to find out some more information about RAP accounts, I suggest you watch my video entitled RAP Account Fundamentals, which will give you an overview of RAP accounts and their benefits, pros and cons, etc. If you'd like to find out more about a personal choice ERAP super and pension, please feel free to contact our office and one of our friendly customer service staff will be more than happy to help you.